So good morning everybody. Uh, just thought I would uh, show you what I've got in the garage uh, at the minute. There's a Realm Traffic uh, DCI 100 there. So there's a 1.9 DCI uh, diesel round engine there. So what the problem with this car is uh, the guy was out on a job, uh, uses this van part of his work and uh, came out and the clutch pedal was at the at the deck so with pressure put a bit of pressure bleeded on pressure blade on the uh, on the master cylinder there and uh, the concentric slave is leaking so i've got the engine on a wee jack i've got the gearbox ready to come out there on that cradle that's how there and i've got her supported as well with a crane so I just uh, I just left that jack underneath it there uh, overnight because that crane tends to drop on me. But the point of this video is I was just wanting to show you if you ever wanna uh, if you ever gonna do any work in any of these traffics, uh, basically the front comes off, the whole front comes off uh, pretty easily. It's sort of like a modular design. It's it's almost as if it's it's. Uh, if it's made uh, to do that. So uh, I'm sure if you've ever lifted the bonnet in one of these things, uh, you'll find that the engine is a way down, uh, is a way, way down in the, in the balls. So the joystick was going mad there. So uh, the, top, the top of the, uh, the top of the slam panel is about there and it goes across. So you're sitting about here and you're, you're looking down and everything. But the way it's designed, it's designed in a, a modular fashion, as I say. So you have this, uh, this black thing here. Uh, look, uh, my, my friend like I said it looked like, a, like, looked like Batman. So it's a, that big Batman mask there. That uh, intercooler is still attached. It's on the back of it. And, uh, that's where the that's where the bonnet uh, catch is. That's the ordinary water radiator there. Uh, that's the headlights, and that's the bumper. This is the the main bumper that goes behind it there. This car had build bars on. Uh, these bolts here, if it hasn't been off before, these bolts here can be quite rusty in, quite tight to take off. So they can take a minute or two. And there's uh, there's there's four four on it there there's one there at the bottom there as well <coughs> pardon me so uh, there's, there's that there it's just a couple of 10 mil bolts the indicator is held in place with that spring there so that's hooked on at the back of the headlight so there's a finger hook on it there and you just hook it hook it off and it just slides out it's not even screwed in there's uh two or three 10 mils holds the headlights on and uh, you just unclip the bulbs at the back. Uh, there are torques along the top of the bumper itself, big plastic molded bumper. Um, so you just pull it off, there's a couple of torques either side on the wings and then the one that people don't know about is there's one behind the number plate. There's a torques there behind the number plate. So you zip all them out and uh, I have the car on the ramp here. It's up, the wheels are off the ground it's up in the air uh, a couple of feet just so that I can, I can work at it nicely I don't like it being up in the air too much uh, so that I'm stretching so the whole engine is right in front of me so I'm going to just, I'm gonna just set the radiator in place here and show you you don't uh, see if you're going to change the alternator or even to do a timing belt or nearly anything on this side uh, the, the radiator comes to about here comes about here that's uh that's where the radiator slots into there and it, and it comes to about there and this side here then uh, is completely open there's a plastic cover here and uh you just it just clips off the power steering fluid is just clipped into that uh that batman plastic mask thing that just slides in so it's it's sort of designed to for the front to come off it uh, pretty easily. The only thing you have to really unscrew from the plastic thing 
is this is the uh, the bonnet switch. So there's one 10 mil nut on it, and uh, one 10 mil nut behind it, which also clips on, uh, which also holds that tab of the the ECU cover. So set that to the side. Uh, yeah, that's my uh, that's my concentric slave pipe there. Just clamped so the fluid doesn't leak out of it. We got the actually got the clutch working again by doing a pressure bleed. Uh, you'll not bleed these uh, with gravity. Uh, you need to put a bit of pressure on it and with the pedal to the floor. Uh, the pressure bleeder just fires the fluid through and that was us. Clutch paddle returned so it was able to uh, drive it again. The, 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 the vehicle came, came to me on, a, on the back of a truck. Uh, the guy was working, it was about 80 miles away. So it came in the back of a truck on a late Friday afternoon and uh, he wants it fixed because it's his business and he has uh, clients uh, waiting. So we need to pull that. This is ready for ready for that box to come out. Uh, I said to him we may as well change, may end up changing the clutch if it's contaminated. He seems to think the clutch was changed before his ownership. But nevertheless, uh, concentric slave. Not that dear, about 50 quid. But uh, a, fair, a fair bit of work pulling the shafts out. Uh, this, this shaft here and actually wouldn't come out of the hub. Couldn't get out of the hub, so uh, we just unscrewed it out of the gearbox. So, hub, shaft and all. Uh, the other shaft is hiding under there. So that's the other shaft. It comes out of the center bearing and then into the, into the gearbox. So that's the, the driver's side uh, UK shaft there. That's the long shaft that goes into the gearbox. Uh, let me see, anything else to tell you? Most of, most of the, that's the gearbox mount there. Most of the stuff lying on the floor here is actually the front end. And they all look big components. But, you know, with your, with your wee uh, impact on, you, you can zip, zip the leg of that off in, uh, in no time. It's maybe about an hour's work uh, pulling the front end of it. Uh, and if it's been off before, it's th these bolts here. These bolts rust up on you, the threads rust up, but they're fairly coarse threads, so it just, it's just a bit of patience. Uh, run them in and out. You can get at them. Uh, can't really get impact gone on them because the, the, the beam is, is across and you can't really get a gun on it, so it's, it's pretty, a, bit, a bit of a manual operation. That's the most time consuming bit. As I say, I pulled the radiator out, which is uh, pretty easy. Uh, bottom hose off, that's the top hose there. So that's where the radiator sits normally, and it just lifts out. There's a couple of uh, R clips below those, uh, those mounts, and uh, the radiator just lifts out. So. If you need if you need to get at any any other parts of the the engine at the front, but as I say, if you're changing the alternator or even doing a timing belt, the timing belts in behind there, if you're even doing the timing belt, uh, you know I'm I'm standing here at uh, this car is a is a chest height here at the minute, so I'm holding the phone about chest height, and uh, yeah, and I can still get underneath it uh, with the height that I have it. So it looks as if it's uh, had major surgery, but uh, it's, it's really not too bad. It's, it's, it's designed to do that. So uh, just thought I would share that. Oh yes, one last wee thing. I have the bonnet. Uh, the, bonnet normally, the bonnet catch normally rests on the, uh, on the, on the, the Batman mask that goes across. Uh, the bonnet normally rests on that. I have the bonnet. Uh, holding with bungees, there's, there's, uh, this car normally has a roof rack on it, and uh, there's uh, all uh, as standard. There, there's uh, roof rack attachments at the top, so I have a bungee held into that. But you don't have to do that. Uh, what there is, it's actually designed. As I say, you pull that wee grommet out, and uh, and the the bonnet uh, stay will uh, will go into that. 
we'll go into that wee, wee bit there. It normally, it normally goes on to about the middle of the, uh, normally goes on to the middle of the, the slam panel. That would be it there, that we that we uh, slot there, the wee oblong one. So that's where it would normally uh, go. So yeah, it's as I say, it's, the, it's designed to do that. So people may think you're mad pulling the front end off, but it's a wee bit like uh, the, the longitudinal Audis and Volkswagens where you would, uh, the service position is you pull the, the front bonnet out and, uh, or the front bumper out. I mean to say, and uh, it, it allows you access at the front. But this thing comes off completely, and as I say, about half an hour, half an hour to an hour, and everything is it's just looking at you. So uh, when people think that these are a, a real pain to work on, they're not really. Uh, the starter motor is a bit of a is a bit of a pig uh, to get it out because uh, you have to move the, the exhaust out of the way. The turbo is hiding the way down, hiding the way down the b below there uh, at the back. So the things at the back, not so good, not much you can do about that. You just have to uh, go underneath it. But certainly uh, there's your injectors, there's all your injectors there, and they're, they're just, they're just uh, beside bes me, they, they might as well be on the bench. And uh, power steering pump, these have a terrible habit of uh, that back plate there coming apart I got I replaced that a few years ago for this guy uh, alternator uh, time about as I say uh, you know if if you do work on these cars uh, on these traffics Prima Star or Vivaro they're all the same uh, there you go that's a wee tip wee bit of advice I've droned on for long enough now I think you get the point so all the best thanks and bye bye